today I want to tell you the story of just a little background of how I got to know God and how Jesus chose me and then provide a little bit of scripture to just kind of show you that Jesus really does choose people and he calls on people to start following him in his ministry. The reason I say Jesus chose me is because growing up I was never forced into going to church. My older siblings did we were Catholic, so they did CCD and got their first Holy Communion, and then by the time it came to me, we were all kind of just done doing all of that. So being that I wasn't brought up, forced to go to church, it wasn't something that I ever really thought about, even though I really kind of thought there was a God, it wasn't something that I spent a lot of my time thinking about and worrying over. So starting about two years ago, I started praying every night before I went to sleep, and I pretty much said the same generic prayer. I didn't really know what it meant. I just kind of said it because I thought maybe this is something I should be doing and maybe this is what we're supposed to be doing and maybe it's a good thing. I didn't really think much more of it than that. So like right before I go to bed, I just lay in bed, say a prayer and go to sleep. I started to think more about it because I realized that a lot of things were shifting in my life and I didn't understand why. Just different people I was coming to be friends with and some activities that I used to really enjoy, I stopped enjoying and I couldn't really put all of that together and I needed some answers. So this night I was in my room and I just started talking like just into the world, reflecting on what's going on in my life and I just got this overwhelming sense of joy. There's no way that I could have lined up everything that happened and everything that I left or joined. There's no way that I could have predicted that by doing all these things that my life would be where it's at now. So then it hit me. I'm not the one controlling my life. And I started crying hysterically. I felt so blessed and filled with joy more than ever before that there was a God and there was someone out there who was making sure that I was gonna be okay and was putting me on the right path so that I could succeed in my future and in my happiness. Growing up not being forced into church and forced into Sunday school, I had no idea what any of this meant. And I was like, I need to start reading the Bible. And even if this whole thing isn't what I think it is, at least I can start the text and read what it is and see if that's something that makes sense to me and something that I can find my answers in. I kind of pondered and I was like, I really want to start reading, but I didn't know where to begin or how. So I just kept praying over and talking to God and I think eventually he led me. I was looking one day and I found this Bible I liked online and I knew that I really wanted one where I can take notes and, you know, really just dive into the word to see what this is all about. So I talked to my mom about it and she wanted to get it for me. She knew it was something that I really wanted. So my mom got it for me as a Christmas present and I was so excited. Like I could not stop thinking about when's this Bible gonna come show up at my house? I need to start reading it. And I really wanted to start going to church but I had no idea where to begin. I knew my family was brought up Catholic but I really wanted to try something different. So then my one friend recommended this non-denominational church and I was like, okay, that sounds really cool. You know, we're good friends, so you seem to be enjoying it. Maybe I will too. So before I went for the first time, I just prayed to God and I was like, please give me a message that this place is for me. I really want to find a church. So I just prayed and prayed that he would show me a sign that this is where I was supposed to be. My first time going was such an experience and I will absolutely never forget it. It all made so much sense. It was so easy to follow along. I loved the music. So at the end of the service, when the pastor went to see if there was anyone there who hadn't had that time and place where they had come to know God, he asked anyone in church to raise their hand and I was really, really scared and then he said, don't let this moment slip away. I knew that it was my time because first off, I'm hysterically crying and so filled with joy. So I raised my hand and someone came over to me and we prayed together. I was hysterically crying the entire time, but she was so, so supportive of me and so understanding. She took my number and texted me afterwards just telling me how excited she was for my new journey and if I ever needed anything that I could talk to her. And it was the best experience ever. I couldn't wait till next Sunday. Pretty much every Sunday since then, me and my boyfriend have been going to church together and we love it, look forward to it all week long. And then after the service, we started coming home and just telling people about it. It only took a couple of weeks for my sister to start coming with us. And then just recently, his parents started coming with us. We are just so in awe of everything that this church has done for us and how much our lives have been changed because of 
our first initial time going there six months ago. So that's my backstory. Sorry, it might've been a little long. <laughs> it's not my whole testimony, but it is just basically how I came to know God and why I feel Jesus chose me. Had I never had that call placed on my heart or that feeling like I was really supposed to go and do this, I don't know when I would have ever ended up going to church. So <laughs> that's my story. Uh, there it is. Now that you know the backstory of why I feel that Jesus chose me, today I want to tell you the story of Jesus the true vine and just relate it to why I feel that Jesus chooses people and how we know that this happens based on the word. So if you want to open your Bibles up and follow along, we are reading out of John 15 and we're just reading the story of Jesus the true vine. So John 15 begins with Jesus speaking he says, I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they will produce even more. I really relate to this verse because it really summed up some things that were going on in my life. Looking back, how I said I was losing interest and I didn't know why, I was so confused why all these things that I used to love and I used to have so much passion for just started to not interest me anymore. When you dive straight into the word, it really makes sense. When Jesus says that his father is the gardener and that he cuts off every branch that doesn't bear fruit, that is his way of saying that the things that he sees that aren't producing happiness anymore or they aren't producing success or they aren't putting us towards the path that he has for us, he starts to snip them away from our lives so that we may bear more fruit. At the time, it may not seem like God is with you or that he's doing the right thing and you might start to question, well, I love these things. Why is God doing this to me? But the answer is that God has a future for us and a plan that we can't understand. So when God sees these things in our lives that he knows aren't going to bear fruit and he knows aren't going to bring happiness and joy and success, he starts to snip them away so that we will bear more fruit and find new things that can give us more happiness and more joy than ever before. In John 15, 4, he says, remain in me and I will remain in you. Here, Jesus is telling you that if you continue to abide in him and live your life based on how he wants you to and based on the word then he's going to abide in you and he's going to continue to snip away at those things in your life that aren't bringing you joy so you can continue to bear more and more fruit and be even more happy and more successful john 15 5 says yes i am the vine you are the branches those who remain in me and i in them will produce much fruit for apart from me, you can do nothing. Here Jesus is just reminding us that apart from him that we can't do anything. And though we may try to do things apart from him, thinking that they will bear fruit and give us happiness, the answer is that they're not going to. The Bible tells you that if you are trying to do these things without Jesus, then you're not going to bear fruit and you're not going to be as happy as you could if you had just lived your life the way that Jesus wants you to live it. So if we skip down a couple verses and go to John 15, 11, it reads, I have told you these things so that you will be filled with joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. Jesus wants us to be happy and wants us to live in a way that we can produce joy in our lives. So he finished this passage of Jesus the true vine in John 15 with verses 15 through 17. Here Jesus says, I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends since I have told you everything the father told me. You didn't choose me. I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. This is my command. Love each other. Jesus tells us right here in John 15, you didn't choose me. I chose you. Jesus wants us to know that he chose us and he's using the word in the Bible to tell us directly. He came and chose us so that we can bear everlasting fruit and that anything that we ask for using his name, the Father's going to give us. So when people ask me, why are you a Christian all of a sudden? Where did you get this newfound sense of religion? I can tell them to just look at John 15. I can tell them that it really wasn't my decision and I really didn't have much control over it. Jesus came and he chose me so that I can bear more fruit. So now, you may have a question about this fruit, and you might ask yourself, what makes this fruit so much greater than the fruit that I feel like I already had in my life? If you turn to Galatians 5, I can give you what I feel is my best way of answering that question. In Galatians 5, verses 19 through 21, the word begins to say, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. 
It then goes on to list a few things that come from a life of sinful nature. Impurity, sorcery, jealousy, self-ambition, dissension. But verse 22 goes on to say, But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. Then it goes on to list many other things that I feel most of us would rather bear than the results of sinful nature. You might look at your life and think, well, this aspect of my life is pretty good and I'm enjoying this and we're having fun. You may even begin to question God and question Jesus and say, why would you take this away from me? But then we look at the word and the answer is as clear as day. God is the gardener and he comes into our lives and snips away our branches so that he may prune them and let us bear more fruit. This fruit is filled with everything that we long for in our lives and thanks to Jesus and thanks for him telling it to us in the word, we can begin to understand that while we might not know what he's doing, we know that when he's taking away these aspects of our lives, it's only so that we can bear more fruit and enjoy everything that he wants to give us. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoy learning my story of how Jesus chose me and I hope that the scripture can help you understand why he chose you too. I had so much fun with you just discussing the Lord and discussing the word. Comment below any other scriptures you'd like me to dive into or any other ideas you may have for future videos. If you like this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and hopefully I will see you next time.